Welcome to another tutorial from All Things JavaScript, where we help bridge the gap between novice and expert. Browsers have a way to store data that can persist across sessions or HTML pages. In this tutorial, we are going to look at the ins and outs of local storage and session storage. We will look at the differences between the two and how to use them to store everything from strings to objects. Now these are the key questions to most anything we study. What is it and when would you use it? Local storage and session storage provide a way to store data across browser sessions or pages. You are able to do this without storing data on the server. You may want to store things like user settings, state information for a web interface. You may need to pass information between pages. There are a lot of different applications. If you need to maintain data without a server, or there may be certain elements you don't want to request from or send to the server, you can use local storage or session storage. Now, you obviously wouldn't want to store sensitive information such as passwords. We will talk about the differences between local storage and session storage in just a moment, but let's first look at a simple example of using them. And I'm going to do this in the console. So I access local storage and I use the set item method of local storage. And I, what I need to do is pass in the identifier I want to give to the information I'm going to store. And that's going to be username. And then I pass in the information I want to store. There, I have set it up in local storage. Now, I'm going to close this HTML page. And I have another HTML page open here. I'm going to open up the console again. And let's retrieve that information. This time we use get item to retrieve it and what we pass in is simply the identifier we had given the information previously. Now if we display uname we can see that it contains Steve H, the username that I put in initially. And that persisted across two HTML pages, two different HTML pages. Now session storage would use the exact same syntax. But we need to discuss what the difference is between local storage and session storage. And those two differences have to do with lifetime and scope. Lifetime meaning how long the data will persist and scope meaning where you can access it. Where is it accessible? So let's look at that. First off, local storage doesn't expire. Now, it can be cleared out using JavaScript or the user can do that through the browser, but it won't expire if just left by itself. So that has to do with the lifetime of local storage. Now also local storage is scoped to the document's origin, meaning if you are on an HTML page that has the same document's origin as the page where local storage was assigned, then you can access that data. So let's let's talk about what could change a document's origin. And that really has to do with three things. The first thing is the protocol. So if the protocol changes, then it will not have the same document origin. So if we use HTTPS, but we have the same domain and we have the same port number, it won't be able to access local storage because the protocol has changed. If the domain is different, it won't be able to access it. If the port is different, it won't be able to access it. So those are the three things that determine the document's origin. So as long as those are the same, you can display as many different HTML pages as you want over any length of time and you can access the information that you place there using local storage. Now, session storage is a bit different. Its lifetime ends when the tab or window is closed. So it will not persist beyond the closing of that tab or window. 
Now the scope is the same as local storage, so it has to do with the document's origin again, but its lifetime is different. So let's do that same exercise we just did, but this time we'll use session storage. So I'm going to open up the console again and session storage.setItem. It's the exact same term we use to set the data. And I'm going to call it username and the data I'm going to pass in is Steve H again. So I press return. Now I'm going to close this page. I have a second page open right here that's the exact same page, exact same HTML page, but it's in a different tab. So I'm going to close this one. And now let's open the console on the second HTML page and let's see if we can access that. I want to use session storage. Get item, just like we did with local storage. Now let's play uname. And it returns null. So if the item has not been stored, what get item will return is a null value. Not undefined, that's an important thing to be aware of. Not undefined, but it will return a null value. And so session storage, I lost that data when I closed the tab. Now local storage is used the most. That's what you'll most likely see. That's probably what you'll use. But if you do need to have that short, shortened lifetime, then session storage is a good option. Now items stored in local storage, or session storage for that matter, are stored in key value pairs, just like they would be on a JavaScript object. So it is possible to access those key value pairs using dot notation. So let's look at that. If I do local storage dot username, that returns the data. So I can access it just like I could access it with get item. Now, since it uses that same key value pair that objects do, we can use a for in loop to see what items have been stored on local storage. I'm going to go to a different page here. This is one that has quite a bit of data stored in local storage. This is a Bitcoin pool and it stores a lot of settings. So if I were to enter a for in loop, pressing shift enter so I can go down to the next line. I'm going to log to the console the key. Shift enter again, but I'm also going to log to the console the actual value. And so to do that, I do local storage and then I use square brackets to access the value for that key. So there's our for in loop. When I press return, we can see quite a bit of information here. Um, this is the key slush pool web app. And then this is all the data associated with that. And there's quite a bit of it, obviously. Now, I just showed how you can access the data using dot notation, how you can access it using a for in loop and the square brackets. However, when working with local storage and session storage, it's recommended that you use the get item and set item methods that have already been shown. That's the recommended method. But as you can see, we can do it this way as well. Now, notice how this information that I pulled up is stored. It looks like an object. But it is storing all that data as a string. So really, it's a JSON string. That's what we're seeing here. Information needs to be stored as a string. That's an important point. Let's look at what would happen if we tried to store an object. So I'm going to jump back to this page now. And I'm going to enter local storage dot set item. And this time we will call the item just test object. And then what I'm going to store is an object. I'm just going to put two items in it. There we 
There's my object. Close parentheses for, test, for set item. Then I'll go ahead and press return. Now let's go ahead and retrieve that. Get item. And we'll use test object. Notice what it returns. It re returns a string that says object, object. So what happened here? Well, when we tried to store an object, it did a conversion of that into a string. And objects have a two-string method on them that turns them into string. Basically, what that two-string method returns is this object, object. And so that's what got stored instead of the full object. So let's look at how we would store an object. And in this object, I'm going to include a date. Let's say we wanted to store a date of when the information was added. So I'm going to set up a date first. And then here's our object. We'll just set it up with a username. And then the date information. And that's all we'll create for that object. All right, let's go ahead and store that now. So local storage dot set item. And I'm going to call this connect info. And now here's what we do to the object. Since as we saw on the other website, it was storing things as a JSON string. We just need to convert the object to a JSON string. So we do that with the JSON object dot stringify. And then we pass in the object. And so that's going to store it as a string. Let's go ahead and save that. I'm going to refresh that page so that code executes. Now let's come back in. I'm going to remove this code. This is going to be like a different HTML page. So later on, we want to retrieve that information. We do just the opposite. We use the JSON object to parse the string. So I'm going to retrieve the string using get item. And we named it connect info. And then let's just log this to the console using console.dir. All right, let's save that. And let's refresh again. There's our object. Notice, look, we can open it up, and it is an object. It truly is an object. Because we saved it as a string, and then we used the JSON object to parse it back into a JavaScript object. So that's how you would store an object and retrieve it. Now, one more thing I want to show you here, the date. The date is being stored as a string. Right now, that's not a date object. So what could we do with that? Well, here's what we can do. I'm going to create another variable. This is going to be the amount of time that has passed in milliseconds since we stored that on local storage. That's what len will represent. And so I'm going to set that equal to new date. Just create a new date for the current date and time. And I'll subtract from that new date again. But this time in creating new date, I'm passing in obj.date. So I'm passing in that string. And the date object is set up so that it will convert a string to a date object if a string is passed in. And then let's just log to the console. LEN. See how much time has passed since we first set that up. And this will be in milliseconds. So if we want to do more work converting to seconds, we'd need to do something like that, or minutes, or whatever. So that's how many milliseconds have passed. If I refresh it again, see the number is getting larger more time is passing. All right. Now, finally, just two last commands that go with local storage and session storage. And that is if we want to remove items. And you would normally use this with local storage because those items will persist. That's their lifetime. One is remove item. 
And what you pass into remove item is simply the identifier. So I'm going to remove connect info that we just added there. So now if I do local storage.get item connect info, it returns a null because it is no longer there. Now one other thing you can do is if you want to remove everything that's been saved, you can enter a clear. And this will remove everything that's attached to local storage. So that's the ins and outs of local storage and session storage. If you found this video helpful, go ahead and give it a like. If you would like to further add to your JavaScript skills, you can do one of the following. Click the video link in the center to access another tutorial right away. Or you can click the circle link on the left to subscribe to the channel. I release a new tutorial each week. And if you would like to visit our website, allthingsjavascript.com, for full courses and a complete list of all our tutorials, click the link on the right. Thanks for watching.